Hi, I'm JT and welcome to my pizza channel. Today I'm reviewing the Jack's Original Thin Pepperoni Pizza. I've never had a Jack's Pizza, so this will be a first for me. So let's open it up and see what it looks like. Uh, it doesn't look too bad. It's got an awfully thin crust. I don't know if I'm going to like that. Uh, hopefully it comes out kind of crisp so I don't have to fold the pieces, but if I have to fold the pieces, that's okay. Here's the finished pizza. So let's, uh, let's cut it and I'll try it and I'll grate it for you. It's cheesy for a little pizza. The crust, like I said, is really thin. It's not a bad tasting crust. I've had worse. Uh, the sauce, though, really doesn't have that much flavor to it. If I was grading this pizza, I'd give it a C minus. And that's in line with all the other frozen pizzas. They range in my opinion, from C plus to C minus. Would I buy this one again? Eh, I don't really think so. I would go for a Tombstone probably, or a Red Baron. So thanks for watching and have a good day. Please subscribe for more pizza videos. Okay, so here's my book, Celerity. And I'm reading this book after every pizza video. And if you want to win the book, just sub to the channel. And uh, every hundred subscribers or so, I'll pick a winner and I'll get you this book. So today we're reading starting on page four. He finished vacuuming and put the sweeper back in the closet. The time was now two minutes to seven. And he sat down on the couch to read the National Geographic King Tut edition that he placed on the couch. Before he could even flip through the pages, the doorbell rang. Jim sprang to his feet while quickly adjusting his black Salvatore Ferragamo tie. Opening up the front door, there stood an older man in his late sixties. Cardinals sing only on sunny days, the man said as he stood in Jim's doorway. Welcome, Jim replied having been satisfied that the man was indeed sent from Lassiter. Their group always uses short phrases as a way to ensure that there would be no misidentification amongst members and those that were not part of the organization. Jim led the man into the living room and asked him if he would like some coffee, as the man sat his briefcase down by his leather recliner. Yes, please. It was a long trip from across the pond today. Maybe the caffeine will keep me going for a few more hours. Jim walked out to his kitchen, turned on his coffee maker, and headed back into the living room. His visitor was now sitting down and asked in a stern voice, Can you guess why I'm here? 
Jim looked at him with a blank stare for a few seconds and quietly replied, It's about Agent 66, isn't it? Yes, the man responded loudly. We finally located him. He then grabbed his black suitcase, sat it on his lap, and opened up the locks that were keeping it shut and secure. Then he reached inside and pulled out a one-half inch thick report and handed it to Jim. On the cover of the report was a logo that Jim recognized immediately. The logo was an image of the sun with a multicolored shield partly covering it. To the right of the logo, it read Celerity. In large font in the middle of the report, it simply had the number 66. Before Jim could open up the report, his visitor said, I want you to make 20 copies of this report and keep them. You'll be getting further instructions telling you who to mail a copy to and when to mail the copies to individuals here in Boston. Jim didn't hesitate and shook his head in the affirmative. Okay, he responded. The man then sat back in the recliner, folded his fingers together, and then reached out and stretched. Agent 66 is here in America. The report I just gave you explains everything that you need to know. 66 is within a day's drive of here. I want you to set up immediate blanket security coverage on him. When the blank hits the fan, where do you want us to take him? Jim asked as he stood up to go get coffee for the two of them. The man took a few seconds to reply. We don't know that yet. We're going to continue to receive messages and respond to them accordingly. We may determine that he should stay in America or we might get him out of the country. We just don't know enough yet. Jim walked out to the kitchen and poured a couple of cups of coffee into large ceramic mugs that had American flags on them with the words Patriot's Day above the flags. Below the flags was the date April 19, 1775. Each year Boston celebrates Patriot's Day with the running of the Boston Marathon and Jim bought the mugs for $15 each from a vendor while he was waiting for his friend's son to cross the finish line at the last marathon. Sugar? Milk? Creamer? Jim asked his visitor as he stirred in a spoonful of sugar and added the contents of a packet of creamer to his cup of coffee. Just a splash of milk, please. I like my coffee on the black side. The man continued searching through his briefcase. I have something else that I wanted to give you if I could find it. Now that the reports were in the hands of Jim, the visitor seemed more relaxed and he act, acted less business-like. Okay, we'll continue from there in the next video. So please subscribe if you want to win this book. Like I said, I'll be giving out a book every 100 subscribers or so. And thanks for watching.